long way to get to this final session, and I'm sure that all of us, um, that we are all relieved to be where we are. We still have, uh, however, some space and some time to discuss what has been thoroughly discussed over the last two days. And I'll try to present our conclusions or our general thoughts that have been expressed uh, uh, yesterday and today. And then we will open up uh, another discussion, final discussion about all of these issues that will help us to even fine tune our, our conclusions. Uh, I will then uh, invite uh, Boris Kanzleiter from Rosa Luxemburg Foundation uh, to say a couple of words. Rosa Luxemburg has been a great supporter of the Subversive Forum and many things that we do uh, could, could have not happened without their support. E eventually, the director of Subversive Forum, uh, Srećko Horvat, will say a couple of words about future perspectives of our work, of the Balkan Forum within or we, without or out with the Subversive Forum. Uh, I think we identified a lot of possible avenues of, of uh, our work and, co and future cooperation. Uh, and what we stressed from the beginning, this is a process, and this process has begun. I'll try now to summarize uh, our discussions and uh, uh, please allow me 10 minutes for this. We will, however, have to evict this, this space at 5.30 uh, and uh, then go and, and, uh, to, to Cinema Europe for the last two big evening keynote lectures. Um, obviously, everyone agrees here, I would say, uh, with uh, paraphrasing the slogan of the World Social Forum, uh, meaning that another Balkans is clearly possible. Uh, not only possible, but, but necessary. Uh, in your work and in, in your political work, in your social work and activism, you, you're obviously uh, uh, testifying to the will to change the Balkans and how it functions. For all of us, it is, however, the place where we live, where we work, and um, I don't see many forces that want to, to change these societies and economies in the way many th people here think they should be changed. Obviously, it's clearly that we uh, target the status quo and that we do not accept the status quo as it is because of its devastating social, economic, and political consequences. Um, we identified over these two days maybe five big general themes uh, that we tackle. One is clearly social justice. The other one is resistance to uh, neoliberal reforms and agenda or to any other uh, uh, agendas that would undermine uh, or, or, or say emancipation, social or political emancipation. Today, we often use uncritically the word neoliberal, but I think that we could all agree basically what this means at this given moment. This is also resistance to current, uh, previous current and certainly future austerity measures. The third big theme is, are the commons. The fourth one, certainly labor, privatizations and workers' struggles, and finally, there's a question of democracy. When it comes to social justice, um, we agree that the last two decades of post-socialist so-called transition uh, have certainly attacked ferociously uh, what was left of the social state of a welfare state uh, that we inherited after the, the crisis in the 80s of of state socialist regimes. Uh, clearly, austerity is not something unknown to us, but something that we, we all know since probably we were all born. And if uh, it's difficult for some people in Europe, it has been difficult for us all this time, and austerity has been, been imposed to the level 
unimaginable for many people today in Europe, but we experience it on our own skin, meaning the, 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 the endangerment of, of bare existence, uh, especially during the times of war. Um, there is certainly a, a, a space for hope, because we've been witnessing over the last two, three years um, a wave of strikes and protests and grassroots mobilizations, something that obviously was painfully lacking over the last 20, 20 years. We also saw a process of reflection of what actually happened to us. Maybe it came too late, but it's good that, that we have this and that we can now confront the reality as it is. In this respect, the Balkans are certainly not uh, uh, lagging behind. In, in many other respects, uh, it corresponds and communicates with the, with the world social movements. In some other respects, it's even bef certain things that are happening in the core, we already experienced uh, in the periphery. Um, especially experiments, some experiments in direct democracy and occupations. We, as a Balkan Forum, I'm sure agree that there is a common ground and an urgent need for the alliance of progressive forces of all kind and all, all shades uh, across the Balkans. We did agree that we are confronting um, the same problems or in inverted commas, the same enemy. However, we also agree that there are differences among different states in, and even among different regions within the same states when it comes to the, to the issues that we are confronting. And that these differences cannot be just put aside. Or if we do it, we'll probably pay, uh, pay, pay it politically. Um, it, is, it is also, unfortunately, so that, we, that these emancipatory resistance movements are, are in some of the countries are still facing the predominant hegemonic nationalist conservative forces. And if in, in some countries this is not that obvious or that the public discourse shifted towards mostly social issues, in some other countries, in majority of post-socialist Balkans, uh, the national question nationalism is still highly present and of course has been used for mobilization of reactionary forces and, the, and also for delegitimization, further delegitimization of emancipatory movements. Something we obviously have to tackle. Um, we also, many, many speakers, uh, however, express their satisfaction and even hopes that citizens are finally reclaiming public more often urban space uh, for their actions and as the theaters where they can, um, they can define their demands and, and where they, they are again uh, recovering their political subjectivity. This is clearly an important development. However, many of our struggles have been dominated by one issue, uh, prob problems or, or mobilizations, mobilizations around one issue either education or urban space or some worker struggles and that some cohesion is absolutely necessary here. And that also, we are aware that uh, all these struggles have to be united in order to, to win at any of these fronts. It is absolutely impossible to win workers' rights without a re redefinition of, of a general society, without redefinition of what social justice means without changing the laws, without occupying and governing urban spaces and without deepening democracy. It, we could say the same for the struggles against commercialization of higher education. However, it is very encouraging to see, again, that the grassroots movements are developing and, and some recent protests uh, and strikes in Slovenia, Croatia, Macedonia, Romania and even Montenegro uh, are, are a clear sign that there is a potential, and not only potential, a need and even a desperate need to act in this situation. It is also an encouraging sign that these uh, movements tackled the problems of diminishing democracies in their states 
but also police brutality and violence. It is important that these movements uh, are not only consi co considered with some, are not forgetting the, the most important issues as well in this region, such as human rights issues or promotion of minorities' rights, and the, that, that they do not forget about the struggle for gender equality, that all of these elements being part of the overall leftist and progressive strategy. Um, coming to the commons, uh, commons turn out to be a, a, a rallying point for many of these social struggles and social movements. Obviously, the, 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 the very danger in which uh, uh, um, natural resources are put in the pri privatization schemes or the attacks on public utilities, medical systems, uh, higher education, agricultural land, or a public space provoked a wish to fight and struggle or were some sort of an alarm finally for people to wake up. Um, the, these movements to which many of us belong uh, reject, reject privatization of resources, uh, but not only that they, they, they struggle for the defense, which is extremely important at this moment, but they're also promoting a different property relations, a different type of management of public resources, transparency in managing uh, uh, what is the public and also what is the commons, a different relationship of the private and the public, and they're also calling for a creative aut autonomy from both the market and the state. Again, promoting collective management of our resources and again promoting the expansion of citizens' control. The commons also, the struggle for the commons also show, showed us, uh, showed that the, the, the new progressive forces wants to reintroduce social norms of trust and solidarity into our thinking about how the city should be governed, how the education system should be run, or the ways in which the internet freedoms should be regulated or how the, or against any kind of restrictions in this domain, especially when it comes to electronic commons. Finally, today we've been discussing at length uh, the labor conditions, privatizations and worker struggles. Uh, we heard a lot of uh, very important reports, many of them even tragic reports of the state in which the workers across the post-socialist Balkans uh, live today. Um, we all, all these personal stories are, are also telling us something about the destruction of human knowledge, but also destruction of human skills and capacities to which these people are subject to. Uh, we've been seeing uh, 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 a creation, and this is a, this is a point where we should all be alarmed, a growing creation of what, what some analysts would call human waste. People that are not employed uh, and are unemployable and are after a certain age basically pushed to the margins uh, 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 of, of, of the labor market. Uh, we could say that privatization campaigns, and all our union leaders uh, and union activists agree about this, was a one huge disaster. The telling example of, of industries that have been surviving two world wars, recent wars, but did not survive privatization is certainly something that we should all think about. Um, we, we've been also witnessing to the media campaigns against independent unions and against worker struggles. And everything, and when it comes to the labor relations, we can see a, a, a strong, enorm, enormously strong coalition between the capital, the political oligarchies, and the media. It has been said, though, that not sufficient work has been done on these issues uh, especially in the parts of, the, in the academic circles, uh, that we will certainly need some more research on this topic, and that we'll certainly need to mobilize people around, around issues of labor that, that affect 
all of us or will soon affect all of us. The precarious work is becoming widespread and as such uh, uh, it also affects uh, gender relations since very often women are subject not only to, to, to degrading working conditions but also uh, 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 to broken gender relations and uh, never uh, vanishing household work. Similar processes again are happening from Romania to Montenegro to Croatia almost everywhere with the same schemes which t shows that, that the enemy or let's say that the, that the capital is using the same methods, something that we are not very strong at and something that, that certainly again capital crosses borders easily, we are quite often hesitant to do so. Uh, as our panel on the workers showed that although people coming from the same country, from the same historical position, do not communicate enough, although they face exactly the same, same problems. Uh, a huge amount of work will be needed in reuniting these, these workers' movement. And without reuniting this workers' movement, uh, obviously we are not going to, to have something that we, that we all hope for, that the, national, uh, that the national or ethnic consciousness will be replaced by class consciousness, something that many of us mentioned here. Finally, we are coming to the question of, of democracy uh, the question was debated at length, especially around the problem of direct versus representative democracy, or put it in a different way, uh, about the relationship between direct and representative democracy. We saw some surprisingly successful movements that use direct democratic methods. These movements all showed enormous emancipatory potential of the direct democratic methods, but also showed some limitations. Uh, many people here agreed that struggle is happening at different levels and with different methods depending on the context and that will probably, what we are going to see at the next phase is some kind of combination of all these struggles and all these different methods how to unite, uh, how to unite political forces and maybe crucially influence social, political or economic changes. Again, and, and I will conclude with this, uh, these five issues, and obviously these five issues are not the only five issues, but are covering a lot of ground of, of our struggles, very often seem to have different experts uh, uh, spe uh, specialized for only one of these domains. Any left strategy of any left and progressive movement will have to work on all of these issues using the existing experience communicating with, with global actors, and also reflecting how the change could be bring about in this particular uh, part of the world. I'll stop here. Thank you. I'm, opening, I'm opening the discussion about our common conclusions. Uh, it would be great to, to have another round of discussion just to precise our, our, our conclusions and now the, the floor is yours. Whoever wants to start first. I know that you all want to go home earlier or just, uh, but one more hour. Very good. Well, I think... Uh, to break the ice, it might be better for an outsider to intervene. Um, it, of course, makes one feel very happy to, to hear that very, very um, well-written summary. I hesitate to call it conclusions, and I'll say that why, um, of the discussions we had. And the discussions which I think have been, to my expectations, beyond one's imagination that it, they were so good. Um, I would, however, want to touch on one or two points which uh, situate these discussions within the Balkans. 
Now, a lot of these questions are global. They pertain to all parts of the world. The problems of privatization, the private the question of commons, the question of democracy. Uh, they are problems which all parts of this world are facing. And what is it that, in, while we must address these global questions, what is the specificity of the Balkans within this? if we are talking of a Balkan forum or thinking of moving towards a Balkan social forum. Now, as a complete outsider, and therefore you can dismiss that as completely wrong, because I could be completely wrong. While we say that the problem is of the capital and the problem is of, the, of imperialisms, I do not want to underestimate the particular challenge that the Balkans um, have before us in creating a platform of unity. And to my mind, this region provides a much bigger challenge than the other regions where I'm familiar with uh, work because of the baggage, particularly the baggage of about 40 years of socialist states, which floundered. And I would presume that if I was a social activist, an intellectual, an academician from this region, uh, this would be a question that would weigh very, very heavily on my mind. Because given the fact that a socialist experiment, if we want to call it, could not continue beyond a certain period of time, at the level of the state, this baggage provides a challenge in the sense that a large population from this region probably vilifies those 40 years as a problem. As a problem from which we are growing out and let us grow out into this free world from which we were shackled with this for 40 years. Now, for people who want to create a new radical left progressive platform, one has to distance with this uh, 40 years experience, but also build on it for, in order to have an acceptance. And the acceptance finally has not to be within 500 people here, but within the masses of this region. And I think that is, the, to me, an overpowering challenge. How, do, how does one reclaim some best parts of the past while distancing with some of the worst parts of the past in order to create a platform which is still a left radical platform for the future. And to my mind, as trade unions, as social movements, as academicians, and as ordinary citizens, it's a formidable challenge. I would like to give a comparative example of which I'm more familiar with. It's the problem of a Chinese radical left intellectual today. It's a very, very terrible thing to be a left radical intellectual in China today. Because on one hand, you have the Maoist past with a lot that is good, but with cultural revolution as a baggage, which is a bad word in China. You cannot go to people and talk about Maoist China with the baggage of cultural revolution. And you have today's quote unquote socialist China, I don't think China is socialist, you'll pardon me. I don't know what it is. It's, it's, it's a term I don't have. And then say, oh well, we have got rid of the Maoist China into a new socialist China, because we don't have a new socialist China. Therefore, independent uh, persons in China to talk of a new radical left platform in China is a very difficult task. It's a very difficult task, which, uh, which can, uh, uh, fall on your face, as recently happened in the city of Chongqing, uh, where the party secretary has now been denounced and, and thrown away. And along with that, a lot of processes that were started uh, uh, in, in the city of Chongqing towards a new vision of how we could combine a new progressive left. I'm saying this not, only, not to scare ourselves uh, into it, but I'm saying this with the hope, and the hope that I have seen here in the last four to five days, that the kind of uh, um, 
uh, summary that uh, Igor presented, which is wonderful. Um, if we have to move towards a future platform of radical left in Balkans, we'll have to move slowly, I think. I would probably, as a person who has been involved with this World Social Forum process for about, since its beginning, would be very careful, particularly to record our conclusions. Because the problem with that is that, as we say in the social forum process, let's not have a statement, because the moment we have a statement, someone feels left. Someone feels, I'm not included. Someone says, my, my uh, concern did not get adequate attention in the conclusion. Um, oh, you talked, about, uh, you talked about workers and trade unions in two paragraphs but the children got only two sentences. Uh, you move into a political negotiation, this is not to do only with drafting, into a political negotiation where that platform, a democratic platform, requires a certain equality, which is not then to be measured by the fluency of writing, but by negotiations based on trust. And it is that, Negotiation based on trust, which is a political challenge. It's not merely a friendship, emotional challenge, where all forms of political shades with a commonality of a radical left feel that we are working in a democratic manner which gives us trust with each other. And from my experience, I find it that in the last five days, there has been a beginning of that process. I do think that with the challenge that I just mentioned, and with all the things that have been recorded, and, and I already acknowledged that, I feel that Balkans can produce something very unique, which other parts of the world do not have. Even the core does not have today, if we call the core and periphery thing that Samir uh, keeps on talking about. The core doesn't have that kind of immediate historical background as a basis for moving towards uh, a new. It has a very fossilized background, and it's a, it's a big problem. And with that immediate past of the Balkan, if that can be given shape by a leadership with a very strong presence of people in that, uh, but slowly, as the Brazilians say, let's not hasten into a conclusion, because the conclusion may actually become a bullet against us. Uh, they keep on uh, reminding us all the time. Uh, I, I do think that uh, what Igor just read out in that sense is wonderful. And uh, the processes, and this is the last word I would want to say, it's not merely then a theoretical construction of an alternative uh, radical left or a, or a new radical left. I think it's a lot based not on only your theoretical construction, but practice. And practice of that in the areas of education, in the areas of health, in, in, in the areas of commons, in the areas of experimental democracies which are different from representative, and working out those practices and then at the same time theorizing them towards something else. I, as a person from outside, look at great hope to that process from the Balkans. Thank you. So I wouldn't uh, ask for the word uh, generally, but as nobody else is interested, I would just had uh, uh, maybe two comments about uh, not anything specific, but just some general things I noticed in the discussions uh, concerning Balkans in the last two days. So uh, generally there are, I think, uh, two, um, uh, two tendencies that appeared. Uh, <clears throat> in the discussions about the, the left in the uh, Balkans, or specifically in the former Yugoslavia, which I think uh, somehow hold uh, a very negative baggage of, the, of the, the discussions that were so much present here in the 90s. So it somehow seems to me that there is still in the left a uh, big baggage of um, this uh, tra transition state uh, liberalism which uh, which um, uh, somehow uh, did not manage to to understand the the, the position we uh, the our, our region is in and is still somehow um, 
uh, not allowing us to, to go in the understanding of our positions further. So I think uh, first of these issues is um, overemphasizing uh, uh, not, not so much national question, but the issue of uh, inter-ethnic hatred or, or national conflicts. So I'm not claiming, of course, that there isn't uh, a national hatred or, or ethnic conflicts in the, in the former Yugoslavian region, but it somehow seems to me that compared to the, to the to even recent past, uh, it might be uh, somehow um, uh, uh, we might be uh, limiting ourselves by overemphasizing the the the, the importance of um, of nationalism as like uh, uh, producing uh, uh, social uh, producing ethnic conflicts and reducing social conflicts. Well, I mean, I can I can uh, maybe not suggest I can you know uh, like. Um, uh, suggest some some uh, uh, um, how do you say it? Uh, examples. For instance, uh, uh, I mean, uh, it seems that uh, the the mainstream politics, the politics of the ruling classes, uh, have uh, really moved far away from from uh, the the producing ethnic hatred that that existed uh, uh, for for number of years here. So, for instance, you have the 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 mainstream bourgeois politics in uh, in Serbia, which <coughs> until Ten years ago was very much dominated by this pro-European and uh, radical, uh, I'm not radical in a, in a, a progressive sense, but uh, ra uh, in the sense of radical party of radical nationalism. So, uh, for instance, uh, uh, it seems that, that this party that somehow dominated uh, uh, at least half of the political scene in Serbia has recently really, um, how to say, it almost disappeared. So uh, instead of it, you have um, uh, two uh, two pro-European parties that compete for uh, for uh, for power in uh, in Serbia. So this is also a process that occurred a little earlier in Croatia. Uh, and uh, I mean, uh, this is not uh, this. I'm not suggesting that this is a good thing. I'm only trying to uh, explain that it seems to me that uh, uh, the room for uh, the, the the space for for some uh, specific nationalist. Uh, uh, projects of uh, national bourgeoisie of national ruling classes has disappeared very much, and why it ha why has it disappeared? I mean, and uh, it has disappeared uh, with the with the more strict, uh, more um, defined control of uh, of imperialism in our region. And uh, when we talk about uh, uh, nationalism, the, the the regions and countries that that still uh, with still existing uh, nationalism and ethnic conflicts. Uh, I mean, these are uh, regions, specifically Bosnia and Kosovo, who are uh, uh, the, the nationalism, the nation, national tension that exists there is very much uh, uh, the result of inter-imperialist uh, conflicts. So, for instance, uh, the Serbian part of Bosnia, and uh, you know, uh, uh, with uh, with its uh, uh, with its constant intervention and support from, for instance, Russian imperialism, is not something we should we should. Ex ex um, uh, we shouldn't ignore. So I mean, the 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 also in Kosovo, you know, the 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 regions where ethnic tens tensions still exist, are they are not the like the product of our um, uh, no um, hundred years of hatred or whatever. I mean, they are uh, where they still exist. They are produced by the conflicts, uh, specifically um, between Western European imperialism and Russian imperialism. Um, uh, for instance, so it, it seems to me that if we want to talk about uh, uh, about uh, ethnical hatred and ethnical division, uh, divisions that still exist in the Balkans and still somehow paralyze us in, in doing, we have to uh, understand that it's the problem of imperialism, and I think that uh, we have to conclude that the only way of overcoming these ethnic conflicts in the Balkans is basically to do it on an anti-imperialist platform. So to to um, work on a, on a platform by uh, that would uh, uh, com that would uh, unite uh, like the people of Balkans. Uh, on a, on a, uh, on a, in an uh, attempt in a project uh, to to uh, to liberate Bal Balkans from the inter-imperialist conflicts that uh, s that that basically still produce ethnic conflicts in our region. Uh, so and uh, the other thing that um, 
uh, that I wanted to say about uh, what, what seems to me like like a baggage from from this uh, uh, discourse of the 90s uh, is is this um, I I would say I, I don't know better English word so uh, I will say whining like this uh, we we often uh, come here and talk about how uh, specifically difficult the situation in our countries is and. Uh, uh, there are so many obstacles and uh, difficulties for, for building a movement in our countries. Well, I mean, uh, I think it's a very unproductive way of, uh, of discussing things here. And uh, I mean, um, every time uh, I hear uh, I hear this uh, um, this discourse of uh, you know speaking about how uh, how extremely difficult and uh, and uh, uh, how how our movements are, are weak and uh, everything else. Well, you know, look at Hungary or look at Romania. I mean, there's nothing happening there, and you really have uh, extreme um, authoritarian tendencies. You know, and uh, and uh, uh, basically, you know, no response and. If you look at former Yugoslavia, I mean, there are so many initiatives, so many social struggles. I mean, there are even uh, some very good connections between, uh, for instance, workers' movement with, with uh, uh, how to say, some <coughs> uh, left-wing activists. So, I mean, basically, we have to really, really have to uh, move away in the future from, from this uh, discourse of constant whining about how difficult it is here. You know, we know we, we're starting to, to build like an emancipatory project so i mean let's let's uh, talk more about uh, concrete strategies which we found useful or didn't find useful to build from that you know we, we should really move away from from this uh, uh, understanding of our region as a specifically uh, difficult or specifically um, you know troubled because you know in reality <coughs> it's not exactly like that it's there are there are much much worse examples so Okay, uh, are there maybe more questions uh, or comments? Yeah, there is another comment. Huh? Okay. I also think that addressing nationalism would be problematic, uh, especially considering how this wouldn't be the first uh, the, uh, initiative of that kind in, uh, in these areas because there was this RECOM initiative that was supposed to deal with uh, facing the history of the wars in Balkans. And it was supposed to be a transnational with organizations from Croatia, Serbia, and Bosnia and Herzegovina. But it failed because Kosovo, Macedonia, and so on. I'm sorry, I don't know what all of the countries that were involved, and Slovenia as well. But I do know that uh, the, that, uh, that mission has so far failed. I don't know if... Uh, if there's any hope for them to continue their work all together, but uh, right now, okay, NGO langu language. <laughs> but uh, the thing is, they really do have a lot of problems, and I, uh, uh, it feels to me that uh, uh, it appears to me that uh, uh, addressing these kind of si th these problems that we do have, and I do believe that. Uh, uh, the, the history of ethnic non-tolerance uh, uh, still may be a problem for some older generations, or I don't know, in some, I don't know, probably uh, for, uh, although not for us, but maybe for some other people who live also in these countries. But uh, so what I, I do think that, uh, that we should be addressing social and political uh, and economic aims and to start building on it. I think that the problem with these sessions was uh, uh, the fact that we weren't clear enough about that. So there was some talk about uh, nationalism, but no one was explicit about it uh, in a way that um, we, we, we couldn't move away from nationalism in a way that uh, to propose uh, something concrete in any other direction. So I, know, I don't know about the rest of you, but uh, I, I believe that uh, cooperate, transnational cooperation in Balkans exists only uh, on the level of education. I do believe that uh, the fact that today we had uh, people from Petrochemia who were partially uh, ex, uh, ex army, you, they, were, they, they were in the army back in the war, 
some of them. So I do believe that for them to sit here with people from unions from Serbia was uh, some, uh, some kind of a new experience. And I think that uh, these are the kind of uh, things that uh, we should, if we are to talk about cooperation, I think that uh, uh, the kind of cooperation we're doing on education level, I think that that's the, 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 that's the thing that we should be doing in other areas. So I do know that it's, uh, it's more difficult to do that in other areas because there's more baggage uh, and political and uh, emotional and social and uh, economic. But I don't know if uh, we could, um, for example, on the last session about uh, the organizational issues of direct democracy, uh, I felt that there was a big difference in uh, uh, discourse of the union members and the people from uh, different organizations that are that are uh, not workers' organizations. And it felt to me that people from the unions have more concrete, uh, more concrete, um, uh, not 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 uh, solutions, but uh, that there's more t to work on, more more general basis that we could work on. So I don't know. I could be wrong. This may just be my opinion, but I think that we should um, imagine a way to work together on uh, other areas other than education, maybe using the same, same channels as we do for education. <laughs> so, uh, maybe now you have another comment? Yeah. No, 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 I would like to su summarize it up if there are no comments, but if you have a comment, please, there are, you have a comment first and a second, please be short because we're short in time. And third comment, okay. Uh, I can imagine that uh, for Slovenia and maybe for, for Croatia, uh, nationalism is not a big issue, but for uh, most of the rest of the Balkans, it is one of the big issues uh, that uh, left is facing. Uh, they, are, uh, they are using nationalism to distract the attention of the public from the, the neoliberal uh, uh, move, moves that they are taking and they are uh, that, that moves are against uh, the public. And the public attention it doesn't focus to the, the, to the real problems, but to the national problems, because their attention is distracted through national nationalism. And so, uh, as a leftist activist in these countries that we have problems with nationalism, we must tackle nationalism. And uh, this is, uh, so in my opinion, the summary that uh, Igor has uh, uh, made is uh, quite uh, good. And uh, we must understand that because of the, this uh, most uh, of the cases in Balkans that we have problems, serious problems with nationalism, such uh, part is very crucial. Thank you. Tom, and then... I think that um, uh, processes of networking uh, at a different stage in different uh, segments of um, social struggles uh, across Balkans and some uh, activists know themselves more intimately, less, others less so. And I think we are uh, at a stage where we don't necessarily need to pursue um, a collective agenda simply for having a collective agenda, but rather we should uh, try to work in um, trying to focus in uh, and trying to find out what are the problems uh, within individual contexts so that we can help each other working in our specific areas. And I think that would be maybe a productive forum for uh, now looking forward towards uh, Balkan Social Forum, if there will be uh, one, um, to work in, in working formats that will allow more time to detect what people are working on and what are the specific issues that they uh, confront and how can we work based on each other's uh, experiences to progress situations locally. Um, I think that we are at that stage. Sure, we de do need some sort of uh, connection between different struggles and we should uh, care that, that this happens, but I, I think that uh, this is not only so that in education 
there are connections. There is also in uh, struggles around public space and spatial justice. There is also in, in struggles around um, public culture and probably some other areas, I would assume, where civil, uh, civil society has been very active since the 90s. So we should not neglect that. That exists and we should uh, be able to uh, accommodate different uh, stages that those uh, forms of, of networking have already kind of come to. How many first? There, but I'll just add the okay, sentence, okay. Uh, super short. I would just make this, uh, add to this statement, maybe even further, that what I was missing all the time in the program was some kind of transversal connection in between struggles, because discussing separate session, in separate sessions, uh, the commons or, or the left or the national issues or economy, it, it makes sense to be uh, kind of staged as, as a single session within a certain day, but there was not a, a kind of a joint uh, working, uh, or at least I didn't uh, sense it, uh, that, that there would be like a, a, a way where these uh, things would come together and, and kind of cross-pollinate in these uh, uh, methodologies, in, 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 in issues they face, but also in, in, in uh, quality solutions they might produce or, or they have been producing recently. So uh, what I would suggest maybe for a future consideration to have uh, during the day like a, a proper workshop-like uh, situation where all of the contributors could come together and really produce something tangible rather than coming with a finalizing conclusion uh, have some kind of milestones in kind of maybe granular forms in like statements which could be operable for individual uh, movements for 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 individual struggles uh, rather than just agreeing that this is a platform with, like, with the lowest common denominator being that it's left-oriented and we all kind of understand each other. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I'd like to basically continue where uh, Nikola and, and Zdravko uh, left off with the question of nationalism and imperialism. I completely agree. I mean, on, on one hand, um, it is a question why, when you have a nationalist mobilization, why are people mobilizing on the Balkans today? So uh, uh, we can take the example of uh, Macedonia these days, basically, uh, or we can, we can take the example of, of, of Hungary. Uh, in my opinion, uh, the, the, those people who are mobilizing and who do not necessarily uh, belong to the older generations who have uh, different confusions and their lives were uh, pretty harsh in the way uh, in which uh, the circumstances in which they lived in uh, changed dramatically, uh, but also, and especially the younger generations, I think that, that the driving force behind this kind of nationalism is uh, actually uh, 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 the struggle for freedom. People do not feel free. Uh, I, I think the common, uh, 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 the common thing uh, for all of the Balkan states uh, uh, could be summed up in, uh, in uh, basically one world, one word, and that's imperialism, uh, both economically through uh, that slavery and, uh, and military with NATO bases and uh, what, what Nikola has said, especially in the case of, of Serbia, uh, Russia, who is contesting uh, the, U, the US uh, trying to, to build the, pipe, the, the pipelines through, through the Balkans. So uh, uh, in, in this kind of context, uh, the nationalist mobilizations did serve, as, as Nikola pointed out, uh, did serve and, and continue to serve uh, the strengthening of, of the imperialism in the region because, of course, uh, every small nation tends to you know, win some, uh, some gains for itself, uh, but then uh, only to, to come to realize that they need some, uh, some bigger force behind them uh, uh, to, in order to, to, to be able to do something like that, to, to, to make some gains, uh, and which effectively makes them pions uh, 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 of 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 uh, bigger imperialist uh, forces, and I, I think that is the situation uh, in Greece today, as, as well as it is in uh, in 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 Croatia. Um, so, 
I think that's something that, that is connecting the region throughout. So to go back to the to the to the uh, pro pro problem of the the nationalist mobilizations, I think that we on the left uh, need to show the uh, first and foremost the inefficiency of that of, of that uh, 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 um, of that method of of struggle. Because and I think that's that's what's. Uh, valuable for us, for example, if we look back at the, at the partisan movement uh, during the Second World War, uh, uh, for me what I think is, is the most precious thing is that that was the only movement in uh, 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 what is now called former Yugoslavia that, that tended to connect different nationalities uh, to, to make a united struggle against, against the imperialists. So uh, basically, and that, that was cl clearly shown uh, throughout the, the 90s here, uh, the nationalist projects who, who, who were uh, uh, verbally anti-imperialist or try to present themselves as, as anti-imperialist uh, obviously failed to, uh, to combat imperialism. The only thing that we have in our, in our history of, of the 20th century, which is an uh, uh, if, uh, effective struggle, which, which had some results, is actually the internationalist struggles uh, on the Balkans. So uh, to be more concrete, and, and, I'll, and I'll finish here, I think that Greece is of special importance for us uh, on the Balkans now because it's, it is kind of showing the way how you can struggle against the, 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 the dominance, against uh, 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 how a people can struggle from below against the fact that it's not being free uh, to, to make its own decisions on, 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 how, uh, on how to organize you know, the, 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 the society, your life, economics, politics, etc. So, uh, yeah, uh, um, yes, I, I, think, I think that's it. I think we, that we need to be looking uh, on, on how we connect our own struggles with the struggle uh, for uh, economic and political democracy in Greece uh, with the intention of building uh, a, a, a Balkan federation of, of the struggles that, that can be effective in combating uh, imperialism and, and uh, 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 breaking uh, uh, the capitalist rule. Thank you. I would also continue with nationalism, of course, but uh, um, uh, there was a mention of uh, this uh, RECON uh, organization. And uh, I think uh, it is the, another very important problem with we should deal. In which way to remember, in which way to reckon. Because if it continues like this, we will uh, have a typical, uh, as a consequence, a typical bourgeois mystification of reality uh, in, uh, according to this uh, 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 bourgeois view of, of, of collectiveness. Uh, like uh, we have all to say that we are sorry for all the massacres and terrible things that, that happen because somehow we are all guilty. That is making uh, uh, number one alibi for the elites, uh, bureaucrats and bourgeoisie who is doing, who is responsible according to its monopoly on the creation of identities and creation of, poli of, of policies, that it is making alibi, alibi for them, for what they have done, and uh, uh, for their manipulation with the people who don't have, uh, who don't ha uh, who don't have in majority access to the informations they have. Uh, that is one. And what is two, we will make uh, some kind of uh, pathetic industry of memory, such as the industry of memory on Holocaust, and we will again uh, deal with uh, primarily with such things, with this f uh, f f f false, false, uh, uh, fa false reconciliations, false, uh, 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 false, uh, false uh, making reality better than it is. And I, I think uh, we shouldn't uh, go in that way. Yes, to reckon what happened, yes. But we must, we must say who was guilty, who did that, in which system it was done, uh, for, for which profit it was done, and then to end with this for the whole eternity. That is, that is the way to do it, and not in the way of, of just... Uh, 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 
just talking over again about, about atrocities and how we are all sorry, because in fact, if we analyze that, it, 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 uh, it is suitable for the bourgeoisie and not from the majority of the people of Balkans. Thanks. I think we really haven't achieved anything if we at least didn't manage to identify the enemy. I mean, talking about imperialism and, uh, uh, well, identifying imperialism as the main evil and enemy is, I think, out of place a little. Uh, isn't the domestic corrupt elites who really actually stand behind all the practices of predatory capitalism? I mean, just speaking in abstract terms of imperialism or bourgeoisie, also isn't it time to really... Uh, introduce new categories of reasoning. I mean, it was our parents or grandparents' generations who maybe had the legitimacy to really rely only on Marxism and, or s introduce self-management. Isn't it really time to come up with new categories and new discourse? And I think this is also the attempt to really decouple the practice of socialism or historical experience of socialism and the future paradigm of uh, democratic socialism. So I really think the bourgeois talk is a little displaced at the moment. Thanks. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think this is a this is a good question. I'm sorry, what? Yes, of course. I, I, I mean, yeah, I, I wish that this discussion was actually held before so that, yeah, yeah, we, that, that we could have enough time. But I think uh, we need to see of what's been happening with the Balkan region uh, uh, for the past few decades, basically. And uh, if, I, if I had to sum up, and I have to sum up, that, that would be, you, you know, we were basically being made into a consumer desert. You know, we, take, we, 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 uh, we make ourselves indebted. Uh, in order to buy some imports, basically that's 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 how I see it uh, bluntly and pretty schematically. But you know, the, the whole of the region has been deindustrialized in a way that we do not uh, produce anymore, so th so that we can uh, create new value. So we have to import credits uh, 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 in order to to, to survive. Uh, and and since we do not produce, we have to uh, we have to uh, import products uh, usually from Germany. So. Uh, that's uh, that's the situation the, the whole of the region is, and I think that's that's uh, that's what we can call imperialism, like in the economic uh, uh, sense. But it also so, so now that we have a crisis, uh, everything is subjected to repaying that debt. We have to uh, to give that money back that that was lent uh, that was lent to us so that we can survive. So uh, uh, that 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 happens in different. Uh, in different ways in different countries. So, for example, uh, you know, Orban in Hungary, he will uh, he will you know scorn the the ma Masonic uh, elites of the European Union that are making uh, that are you know this dis uh, disgrace for the Hungarian people and, and etc. And he will use huge state repression. Uh, in in Greece, it's being uh, done other way. In in Macedonia, uh, the the local elites are pushing. Uh, the, the, the national question on the forefront. So I mean, it's uh, uh, in Serbia, it's it's state repression. So you know, you, you do not want to uh, you, you want to struggle against our politics. Well, of repaying the debt. So well, yeah, we have police, we have courts, etc. So uh, I think that uh, that that's the, the imperialism that we are talking about. Of course, the first enemy in each of our countries have to be our own our own ruling classes, our own uh, political elites. I mean, that's that's those guys who are actually. Uh, 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 doing those measures in, in praxis, but uh, we, we need to see what's behind it if we want to see uh, uh, what's, what's, the co what's the concrete connection for each of our struggles. Uh, well, I just want to like take the things back maybe to this very, very uh, 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 entitlement of the entire event, the Balkan Social Forum. Because for the first time, or maybe, yeah, for the first time, actually, uh, there, were, there has been organized uh, uh, this type of organizational forum, you know, which includes like all the different perspectives over the thing. But what I wanted to say is that uh, uh, after a long period of like, 
uh, this coin, this buzzword of the volcanism and Vulcan was used in extremely negative uh, uh, manner at that time. Uh, this is one of the first events of this kind that includes this uh, 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 word social, which would you know, help us to, 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 to consider and reconsider the very notion of the Balkans in a completely different manner, uh, totally aside from uh, uh, like it was being used in the not so distant future actually throughout the 20th century. And uh, it's, a it's a good, good way, way, to my point of view, to be here. And I would like to express my personal gratefulness to the organizer, the organizers of the event, because I think that's the very first step uh, uh, which will probably lead us all to, to reconsider all the, all the, all the, all the uh, uh, um, categories considering the volcanistic discourse, such as nationalism, ancient, uh, ancient uh, hatreds, and things like that, and uh, to take a completely different uh, overview over the things. And by insisting on the uh, things to be pronounced as a social uh, and politically grounded rather than uh, culturally national, things like that, by renaming again the, again the things and the very notions, uh, uh, we will, it will help us like to gain a completely different perspective. And we've been discussing like in, 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 in length throughout these uh, five or six days, uh, like the methods, the concepts, We've been introducing the new concepts, which are by themselves a uh, 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 really new one. New ones, I mean, in this uh, particular uh, uh, gathering at this moment. So I think this very uh, 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 um, title of the entire event, like Balkan Social Forum, bears a certain potential like to, to start with something really new in terms of like renaming the things. So nationalism probably wouldn't be a problem if we uh, proved to be like uh, proved to be like uh, faithful to the to the Bowie. We all decided to be here just for the sake of uh, starting something new, and Balkan Social Forum is a a kind of event <laughs> that will, I, I think, you know, serve its purpose. Uh, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, uncon <laughs> unconsciously I was taking your mic, sorry, uh, because I just have a short correction. It's still not the Balkan Social Forum, it's the Balkan Forum, uh, and it's towards the Balkan Social Forum, so we will see what will happen. But in my uh, conclusion, I will give some ideas and also some agenda. We have still some comments. Can you please raise the hands again? Who? Okay, free, let it be the, the last round of comments, please, and then later we can continue the discussion. So, you have the mic, so you're the first one, Primoz is the second one, Ovidio is the, is the Thank last, you. okay? Uh, so, we recognize uh, nationalism uh, as a, a key structure in, in the policies to cover social issues uh, in the Balkans. We uh, recognize uh, imperialism, but it's... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, but it's, it's, yes, it's kind of ab uh, abstract. So take, we take it down a level uh, to the uh, recognizing comprador bourgeoisie uh, as a key element in the, in the, in the Balkans. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, we can't uh, just attack to, uh, them, to, uh, individuals, uh, comprador bourgeoisie, bourgeoisie, but we have to attack the system. How to attack the system? We, ta uh, we take it uh, down a level. We are, uh, I mean, uh, I got the impression on, the, uh, on this forum, uh, we're uh, starting for, from a scratch. The radical left is uh, starting from, from the, the, begin uh, from the bo bottom, from the beginning. So, uh, what to do? Uh, we, in the, such a state of the radical left, uh, till it grows, till it organizes itself more, uh, 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 till, till it gets more uh, stronger organizational structures, uh, till it gets uh, more massive, uh, till the, the, the mm, uh, till social movements appear, till till uh, uh, till that, uh, what to do? Education. 
self-education, education, education in, in the sense of uh, education of the of the uh, of people of, bro of the bro uh, broader uh, pu public. And I mean, Balkan social forum. For, I mean, the, the Balkan forum, the forum, Subversive forum was excellent because it was open to the public. Uh, the public could come and uh, introduce. We could introduce them to. Uh, the social is issues in the Balkans. So I think uh, that's a good a first step, uh, and uh, I'm inviting everybody to, if they can, to Sarajevo this weekend. Uh, it's like a continuation of this forum, uh, the Antifest Anti Capitalist Festival. So you're welcome. <laughs>
so I'll start, and then in the end we will give a word to Boris Kanzleiter also, as in front of Rosa Luxemburg, to say something, because they also continue similar activities. Uh, to start with the thing our comrade from India, Vinod Raina, uh, told us, uh, yes, uh, we think it's better to call it uh, a summary than conclusions, because if you call it conclusions, then it's very similar to a declaration and so on. So uh, we really think we should put this slow, slowly and more slower than we thought in the beginning. Anyway, uh, w at me as one of the organizers, I'm really glad for the last two days and for the last week. And I would also like to thank to Igor, to Andrea, to Vedrana, to Elena, to Misho, to the whole team and to all the moderators and to all the people who participated here, but this is still not the end. Uh, regarding the thing uh, Nicholas said uh, about complaining that we didn't go through with more tactics and strategy, actually, uh, as my comrade on the right side said, this is the first time I think so many organizations, individuals, representatives, delegates and so on from the Balkans gathered at one place and this was, if you ask me, more like a cognitive mapping of the current situation in the Balkans. And I think we should all be uh, very satisfied with the things we achieved. And we hope, and that's, that's actually the agenda for the next Subversive Forum and Balkan Forum, that next year uh, we will be more precise and we will suggest more tactical and strategical solutions or suggestions. Uh, regarding the, the whole discussion about the discourse, language, concepts, mobile phones and so on, uh, I think uh, we have some sort of false dualism here. On the one side we have uh, this thesis of the domestic elites, on the other side we have the thesis of imperialism. On the one side we have the thesis of nationalism, on the one side we have the thesis or antithesis of economy. I think we should be Hegelian here and say there is no domestic corrupted elites without imperialism and there is no imperialism without corrupted elites. And there is no nationalism without political economy and the other way around shock therapy and economy produces more nationalism. I think this is the common ground we could share. Uh, to go on, I think actually we all have a responsibility and a commitment going on from this forum. Uh, so what our suggestion is, is to keep it on, uh, not only as a one-year event, but as a process. So we're really glad a lot of uh, organizations uh, connected. We could have seen this on the first panel on worker struggles today with trade unions who have to get connected. And we really hope you will get more connected. So the plan for the next Subversive Forum and Balkan Forum as a part of the Subversive Forum uh, for May 2013 is uh, to form different working groups who would, who would work on different specific problems. Uh, for example, privatization, uh, privatiz uh, ed privatization of educational system, austerity measures and so on. But we, we will have a chance to talk more on this. Uh, and I think Boris Kanzleiter could also say something about uh, the, the activities of Rosa Luxemburg. Uh, but before I end, uh, first the agenda for today and tomorrow, and then the agenda, what the Russians would call Petoljatka. So uh, for today, uh, at 6 o'clock, there is a book promotion, uh, the famous book by Howard Zinn. Uh, Howard Zinn will not be with us, of course, uh, but uh, it will be interesting. Anyway, at 7 o'clock, keynote lecture by Christian Marazzi on uh, communism of capitalism and capital of communism. At 9 o'clock, uh, Gayatri Chakra Vorti Spivak, and I think uh, after Gayatri Spivak, we have a little party at Cinema Europa and then also, also later in Zagreb. Uh, tomorrow, uh, in front of the hotel at uh, is waiting for us and will bring us to Kumrovets and so on. There we have also a round table, and then we all return to the closing round table moderated by Igor Stix at 7 o'clock in Kino Europa tomorrow with Boris Bud and Renata Seletzel and Dubravka Ugrasic. Uh, regarding other activities, which I really hope uh, most of you will take part, uh, already from tomorrow, uh, an event uh, hosted by our friends from Sarajevo, uh, some of us will be there, Eric Tusan, Boris Buden, and so on. And I think it's really important to continue this uh, discussion in Sarajevo. As you can see, this is already not a one-year event. Uh, later on, uh, we have uh, notes. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I think uh, Peter Demo could also say something about his activities in Romania, maybe, or you can tell us later. Uh, Transform will also Transform Network will also continue with some activities. Uh, the Subversive Forum and I also some institutions here, as uh, Right to the City and Breed, are already part of the Alter Summit. I also invite all other organizations who are present here to take part in the organization of the European Alter Summit. If you need more in information, please ask me or some colleagues, because this is an ongoing process uh, which will uh, really uh, try to, to bring some new movement uh, in, in, in Europe. Uh, the other event which might be interesting is the Critical Theory Summer School at Birkbeck University. I think it's in summer. Kostas Duzinas is here. If you need more information, ask him. And uh, I also hope uh, some of you will be present at the World Social Forum in Tunisia, which is also a very important thing, especially because the Balkan Forum tries to be a part also of the World Social Forum process. And maybe we will form a Balkan Social Forum in some years or days or whatever. Uh, so now I would leave uh, my word to Boris Kanzleiter to actually uh, do not the conclusion of the conclusion of the conclusion. Yeah. I will be very brief because everybody wants to go. Um, and I want uh, in the first place to say thank you to uh, the organizational team, to uh, um, Igor Srechko, uh, Andrea, Marina, Nicola, and all the people who were not so visible during this event. I think uh, it, uh, nobody can really imagine how much work is invested in such an event, and I think they really deserved a uh, big applause. As for the uh, Rosa Luxemburg Foundation, I would like to say simply that this event was uh, very successful. Uh, our goals in the region are very simple. We want to help uh, the left movements, social movements, uh, to uh, develop to develop in, in many uh, uh, levels, in the theoretical level, in the organization level. And I think this forum was um, in these terms, very successful. I really don't know, but I think it is probably uh, the first time, maybe it's not the first time, but it's a very rare occasion that uh, left-wing actors, uh, people involved in, in many activities, uh, came together, not only from the former of the Yugoslavia, but also from Albania, Romania, uh, and uh, Bulgaria. In, uh, in it was not only this aspect of a real, uh, I would say, uh, coming together from the whole of the region, but also the level of discussion, which was really impressive. And I think uh, it's, there's really no reason uh, to continue with this kind of self-stigmatization. I completely agree with the comrade upstairs. Um, uh, there is a left in the Balkans. It's a, it's a still a weak left, but it exists. And I think it has, uh, there are good conditions uh, for further development. So, um, uh, when it comes to the uh, further process of the social forum, Balkan forum, and so on, I think it's too early now to define uh, exactly the format. It's up to discussions and uh, evaluation. Uh, anyhow, I can say that uh, Rosa Luxemburg Foundation will be part of this process. Uh, we will be happy to uh, uh, accompany this process. Um, we as an organization cannot be the uh, substitute uh, for an organizational process which has to take place from below. Uh, it must be the uh, social movements, the political actors on the left themselves who are connecting, who are developing networks and discussions. Our, uh, our function in this process is uh, practically limited uh, to giving support and of course also contacts and inputs. Um, but I'm optimistic now that here a good start was done and uh, we will see how it develops. The name of the thing, I think it's not even so important. If it's a social forum, a Balkan forum, Balkan social forum, uh, whatever uh, important is uh, that uh, uh, this process is continuing. Thank you. And just to conclude, one more conclusion. Uh, 
thank you very much, but the, 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 I would like also to congratulate all of you uh, who are participating, the audience, but also speakers, moderators, as Rechko mentioned. It's been six, five days of intensive work, and, and I'm, I'm really impressed with what has been achieved, and uh, there's been a lot of common ground identified, and a lot of, I would say, productive differences, which only invites us to... In this respect, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we'll, we, as they say in rock stars, you know, we love you and we'll be back. <laughs>